Hello and welcome back to Go on the Road. And today we're going to continue with Kubernetes deployments part three. We're going to try and wrap it up in part three. So in part two, we look at all the, well, the use cases that are laid out for using the deployments in the Kubernetes documentation. And we started doing a few things like scaling up pods and so on. And of course, got our Go application to run within Kubernetes with an environmental variable. That environmental variable had the name version with the value v1.0. And that's where we ended things. So today, I want to continue exactly where we left off and see some examples of some of the other use cases that we did not get to cover in part two. Now, in part two, we saw that when we do scale up and so on, or we make any changes to the pod specification, that resulted in a different hash for the pod specification and therefore a new replica set. Now we're going to be able to see how we can use this idea of different version of the replica set or the different version of the deployment really and do things like roll back and pause and roll, and roll out and so on. So let's jump in. What I want to show now is, so if we do kubectl and logs again, you'll see that all the, the pods are picking up the environmental variable, which makes sense, and they're logging it every two seconds. Okay, so that works. So let me clean up and show you this command called describe. So kubectl describe. And you can describe a number of things, like almost every resource in Kubernetes, but we just want our deployment, and we specifically want the deployment called my stack. And if I just zoom in here to my terminal a little bit, I can show you that what we have is all that information about the deployment, when it was created, all the, the labels on it, and so on, how many replicas it needed. And I mentioned this, this rollout roll strategy, which is the maximum number of things that you need um, that can be unavailable before you can start um, destroying things. or And that's sort of putting a cap, right? Um, so that if more than 25% of your parts become unavailable, then it should start creating more. And then the surge, which is how many it should have created, um, the maximum number it could create before it start deleting. So it's gonna surge by 25% before it starts destroying. So when you make changes to your pods, it needs to create new ones first before it starts destroying, as opposed to destroying before it starts creating. And you could change this percentage, but we're not going to mess with that. And you can see the environmental variable over version 1, that 1.1, and that's what's currently running. But what I really want to show you here is all the changes that occur to our um, deployment that, as we were messing around with it. And you can see that now. So if you wanted to get a history of what happened, that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is take, take a look at what's called the rollout. And the rollout manages the versions of your deployment. And so what is, do I mean by version? So every time you make a change that creates a new deployment set, either roll into one that already exists or going back and forth, well, it creates a new version. So let me show you that. So kubectl, and we can do rollout, and then we can do status of the rollout and the deployment. And the deployment we want, of course, is my stack. And so we can see that how it says it's rolled out successfully. So let's clean up. And what I want to look at now is the history. So rollout, and then we'll do history, and then we'll say history of the deployment, and again, my deployment, my stack. And you can see here are the revisions, right? So we have revision one, two, and three. And no change was because you know I didn't use a message when I was making those changes. So the change cause or the reason um, that wasn't listed here. But let's do this. Let's do kubectl and let's create another revision. And this time what we'll do is we'll do you set env and env. And this time we'll go back to version one. And so remember, I showed you this in the previous video. This is going to reuse the existing replica set because when it makes this change to the pod section, is gonna do a hash and see that there's already a replica set that has that hash. So it's simply just gonna reuse that. And so if we kind of zoom out here a bit, clean up, cube, CTL, get replica set. 
and you'll see that oh, we still have three replica sets. It didn't create a new one, it just rolled back to the previous one. Well, um, let's just take a look and see how many revisions we have now. So we're doing cube, CTL, and we're doing rollout, and we're doing the history. And notice how we have a fourth version um, revision number, but notice revision two is no longer there. So that's because revision two was what we essentially went back to without say going back to revision two. But Kubernetes was smart enough to see, oh, that's the same as revision two. So I'll just apply that revision and give you four. And there's no point in keeping it because it's exactly the same thing. So, okay, so this is our history of um, our revisions. So let's say I updated my application with some new code. Specifically, this code is going to say, if the version is 4.0, v4.0, I want to panic. So let's just imagine that this is a bug in my application, right? So of course, we have to go back and build this and we call it um, version two. So we're going to do Docker build, of course, and we'll call it version two, all right? And since we want this to be usable within our pod, of course, we have to add it to our um, Kubernetes. So we'll do image import and we'll import our new awesome application version. Well, sort of two, but not version two, but you get the idea. All right, so let's clean up. Let's say I want to change the image from 0, 01 to that 0, 02 image. So I'm going to say kubectl set, and this time I want to use image and I want to use deployment and I want to use my stack. All right, so deployment at app, and I want to do my stack. And let's think about this for a second. Which image do I want to override? So if we go back to my deployment here, remember you could have multiple images and each one of them could have a name. So the image that's named awesome, I want to change it to B02. So I want AWSOME awesome to be equals to 02. I already imported that already. And so if I run this, it updates the deployment and you can see um, it's rolled over and it's already running, it's up and running and it's fine. So great. And we can, you know, of course do kubectl, let's clean up, kubectl describe. And if we describe my stack, we should be able to see that how oh, we're running this new um, image, great. But we're still using this message version v1.0, which if we clean up and we do kubectl logs, we should be able to see that though it's still version 1.0.0. All right, so what about if, I'm gonna leave that running for now, and what I'm gonna do is try and change our revision number to remember v4.0, because that's the one that if we set it to that, we should have a problem. So I'm going to say kubectl set image, and um, no, not image, env is what I wanna set. And I wanna set it to v, 4.0. And if we do that, we'll see that oh, we have a problem. Um, again, that creates a new replica set. And you can see that by the fact that the name of these pods, they always have their replica set name followed by some unique thing. And it tries to create like three of them and it's in a crash loop. So Kubernetes detected that and it's not going to move forward. So our rollout of this new image is sort of stuck, right? We can't create any more of the new one we want, but we shouldn't be able to delete any previous one. So this is sort of good because if you ever try to do a bad deployment, still have some availability of um, use of your application, right? And so we're going to be stuck in this sort of state right now. And so how do we fix this? Well, let's just see if we do kubectl and we do rollout just as before and we do status and our deployment, and you can see it says waiting for deployment. Notice it doesn't return with success. It says it's waiting to roll out four out of five um, new replicas have been updated, right? And so it, it's sort of stuck here with these four that's updated out of the five, but it can move forward. So what we can do is we can say we want to roll back. So let's do cube CTL rollout. And then if we enter this command, we'll see that's how there are a number of things we can do. We look at the history before, we look at status, we can undo and go, go back to the previous rollout, or we can pause, start, and resume, okay? So 
we don't want to restart the rollout because we know it's going to be the same issue if we restart it. But what we can do is undo. So let's go back to the previous. Um, let's do rollout and then um, remember with the status was stuck there, it didn't return. But if we do history, we should see all those versions. And then what we can do is then undo that bad rollout. And Kubernetes goes back to the previous version. Now you could roll back to a specific version by if you do minus help, you can see you can specify like a two version number and that goes back to you know a specific version. Otherwise it's zero and since it doesn't really keep track of zero version, it just sim simply means the last version, whatever the last version is. Okay, so I showed you almost everything I need to show you and so let's just wrap it up with one last thing. Every time I made a change, like every time I change the environmental variable or the image, immediately that caused the rollout to happen. What if I want to make multiple changes and then have it apply? So what I can do is I can say that let's do a pause of our rollout. And then now I can go make those changes. So let's go back up. And so instead of this being version 4.0, which we know is going to crash, we'll make it version 4.0.1, that's environmental variable. Notice how I apply that, and yet no change has happened in terms of um, trying to, you know, change the number of pods that are running, right? So no replica set change happened. And let's just say I also wanted to change the image. So I'm going to do set image, and let's just change this back to one. And so I've made two changes to my deployment, and nothing has changed what you saw above there just now that wasn't the change we're still running on that whole um, replica set and let me show you that because now when we do cube ctl and instead and i do rollout and instead of saying pause let me clean up i'll say resume so those changes were sort of queued up and now when i say resume you're going to see that how it now applies it and now we have our new set of pods running with and this exit it, but let's do it again and you can see we are now on version 4.1 okay so hopefully you learn something you see how super cool deployments are and some of the capability it gives you in terms of being able to do a rollout and rollback and all this other stuff if you look at the number of the history how many um revision it keeps track of so q ctl and roll out history and of course you want to do a deployment you'll see it has 10. so that's the maximum the default that it keeps after this if i keep make changes it's going to get rid of the earlier ones and earlier ones right like version one or something so it only keep 10 i mean it doesn't really have 10 here right now because you know two is missing four is missing blah 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 i explained that already but once i actually have 10 unique versions that's where it start trimming the number of uh, replica sets. So you can imagine each revision here is really saying each replica set, the number of replica set that I have active. Um, I have active, but remember in terms of replica sets that um, get replica set, that even if I have these many actives, some of them, the, well, the ones that are not really um, have, they're going to be zero. So unless it's stuck or something in some weird state that you might you might have a number a set of rep, um, pods split between them. Otherwise, it's zero. So don't really worry about the number here. Um, this is going to be zero. And by default, it's going to trim it after 10. If you wanted to trim it less than that, maybe just five, or you want to keep more 20, there's a way to change that. Um, look at the documentation. It tells you how to do it. And you can basically put that as a value within the deployment specification that you want to keep that many in your history. All right. So that's it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming back. If you're new here and you watch the entire video to the end, I did not ask you to subscribe during the video. But if you're at the end, consider subscribing if you like the material. People who have already subscribed, thank you and appreciate you coming back. Again, thumbs up the video, leave comments, and see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe. Bye.